Uh, thank you, Congressman Banks, for uh, yielding and the time uh, here this evening and for your leadership in crafting uh, this very important budget and this discussion on it tonight. Uh, obviously, uh, we've been waiting on a budget uh, to vote on in the United States Congress and uh, have yet to see a budget. And then I think we learned that there may not be a budget uh, in the uh, United States Congress uh, this year. Um, and that is um, uh, very um, hard to understand because, you know, we're spending $4.2 trillion, uh, 4 to $4.2 trillion. Uh, Two-thirds of that $4.2 trillion, two-thirds of it, is mandatory spending, which is basically on automatic pilot. Uh, and it is uh, skyrocketing. Uh, the biggest increases in our deficit are created uh, by this uh, mandatory spending. On the di discretionary side, it's about a third of what we spend totally. And uh, as far as discretionary spending goes, uh, we've had some modest increases, uh, you know, for the time, uh, first part of the time that I was in the Congress, uh, we basically had budget caps, and uh, actually discretionary spending was held at the same level the entire time. So, uh, you know, I think it's, uh, it's sad that we are financing our standard of living in my generation uh, on the on the backs of my children and their children and their children and their children. So what do we do about it? You know, I, I am very proud to uh, talk about what General and his leadership and what the Republican Study Committee have done here this evening, or what have done in presenting here this evening. Uh, this budget exemplifies fiscal sanity and preserves American freedom. Uh, as most of you know, I spent uh, my career in uh, uh, running of small businesses, uh, starting out in the construction industry, uh, then participating in the banking industry and electronic medical records and, uh, and real estate development. And I did this uh, in conjunction with my wife, Robin, as my partner, and many times we'd sit down at the kitchen table just like every other American family. And we map out a budget. And I knew that spending more than my means was simply out of the question. Well, folks, why can't we do that here in Washington? We need more fiscal common sense here in Washington. And the RSC fiscal year 2020 budget does just that. Picture this, $12.6 trillion in total deficit reduction over 10 years balanced in the budget in just six years by 2025. On that fact alone, I would hope that every member of this body would offer their support. This budget also fosters a rewarding environment for economic growth and job creation. We have heard it over and over again from those who uh, deal in investments and deal with the economy and the growth of the economy uh, that the biggest uh, wind at our face is this budget deficit. It's a headwind. It's going to be a headwind for the growth of this economy if we don't get serious about a budget. Uh, this budget uh, will give us that opportunity for economic growth and job creation. Right now, we have the best economy in the world. 263,000 jobs created last month and over 7 million jobs available throughout this nation, far exceeding the number of job seekers. And I was so glad to work with my colleagues here in Congress the last two years and with the President and uh, making uh, this happen. But the American people made it happen. All we did was provide a uh, opportunity. Uh, we reformed regulations, and we uh, passed a tax reform bill that gave the economy a boost. And frankly, in dealing with the budget deficit 
and going forward, our only hope in this, in this is to grow uh, our economy. We must have GDP growth. In a telephone ta town hall with constituents from Georgia 12 District last night, 73 percent of participants reported their, that our economy is headed in the right direction. When I ran for Congress in 2014, 70 percent of the people in my district said that the economy was going in the wrong direction, and we have flipped it. However, a soaring economy also creates challenges. As we face increasing workforce needs, this budget prioritizes moving Americans off the sidelines and back into the workforce, rewarding work and promoting innovation. Madam Speaker, I am the grandfather of 13 beautiful grandchildren, and the last thing I want to do is leave an insurmountable debt behind for our future generations. I strongly encourage all of my colleagues to get on board with the RSC budget to restore a sense of fiscal responsibility to Washington. Our future depends on it. And with that, I yield. I thank the gentleman from Georgia, a great friend and a great conservative in the House of Representatives. Madam Speaker.